Hello friends of Rock the JVM, this is Daniel, and in this video I'm going to show you my top three favorite tricks with call by name. So this video will address Scala programmers of all levels, and as always I will recommend that you code alongside me, and whenever you need to refer back to call by name, just refer back to this video. For your convenience, this video is also available in written form at rockthejvm.com forward slash blog. So, Call by name is one of those Scala features that confused more programmers than made them happy. It's often abused and misused and almost never used to its full potential. And it also has a very terrible name, but that is for another time. I'm not gonna use $3 words to describe what call by name does. Instead, here's the thing. Uh, if you write a normal function, let's call this by value function, for reasons that will become apparent shortly. So this will be a function that takes an int as an argument and just returns, I don't know, 43. The implementation is not really important. Then when you call it, if you call by value function with the expression two plus three, you know from general programming fundamentals that before this function is being called, two plus three is evaluated first. So two plus three equals five, and so you call by value function of five. This is called by value parameter passing. That means that the value of the argument is computed first and then the function is being invoked. So this is pretty straightforward. Now, if I define a function called by name function, which takes an argument in the form of x colon arrow int, so the arrow here makes all the difference in the world. This is the million dollar sign in this video. And uh, if the implementation is the same 43, then when you call by name function with two plus three, then two plus three is not evaluated. It's only being used inside the by name function. So two plus three is passed literally. So what you're passing here to the by name function is not the value of two plus three, but the expression itself literally as it is. And the function by name function is now responsible for evaluating the expression by simply using the argument name. So if you do, for example, x plus five, for example, if you refer to x, then you force the evaluation of x. This is why this um, argument scheme is called called by name, because when you refer to the name of the argument, it's being uh, forced to evaluate. So this is, I suspect, where the terrible and very confusing call by name name came from. In the creator's defense, I cannot really find a simple one to punch name for this mechanism either. What do you call this? Call by expression or call literally? That phony call? Don't evaluate until they say so? Or whatever. Uh, I think you get the picture in a few sentences and in two lines of code rather than half a book on referential transparency. So uh, this is how call by name actually works. Now, I'm going to show you three tricks on why call by name might actually be useful. So I'm going to show you trick number one, which is re-evaluation. So this call by name mechanism is actually very powerful and allows greater expressiveness in Scala. The first example that I want to show you is that when you pass a by name argument like this, you can evaluate it as many times as you like. Now, uh, one uh, probably legitimate question might be, why would you want to evaluate x very many times? Two plus three is five at every hour of the day. Well, not quite, let me show you. So I'm going to define, let's call this by value print, which prints a long two times. So I'm going to print line x, and I'm, co I'm gonna copy that, and I'm gonna duplicate it. And then I'm going to shamelessly copy this function, and then I'm going to paste it below, and I'm going to call this by name print, and I'm going to add the million dollar sign in this video. So uh, I'm going to define a function that takes a by name argument, and uh, prints that argument twice. Good, now, here's what I'm going to do. In my main function, in uh, my nice things CBN object, I'm going to define a main method by typing shamelessly main and letting the compiler autocomplete everything for me. And I'm going to simply call by value print. So I'm gonna say by value print, by value print. 
damn it, you can't read my thoughts yet. So by value print with the expression system dot nanotime. So if I do that, system dot nanotime will be evaluated and it will be printed twice. So um, if I run this application, naturally I see a huge number printed twice to the console. Nothing too spectacular on that. But if I call by name print with system dot nanotime, I'm going to see a pretty interesting surprise because these two numbers are now different. And so um, why does that happen? I'm pretty sure you have a good guess. Well, because I'm uh, using a by name argument, then this expression system.nanotime is passed literally. And so by name print will evaluate system.nanotime at every moment it is used. And those moments are naturally different because, yes, of course, because that's how physics works. So it's as if I said print line system nanotime and print line system nano time again. So this is the equivalent code that's being executed when I call by name print with system dot nano time. So I'm going to delete that. So this was one of my favorite tricks, trick number one with re-evaluation. Cool, proper spelling, Daniel, cool. Let me show you trick number two, which is a pattern called call by need. And uh, call by need is used in infinite collections. And I'm going to demo that very shortly. So let me define an abstract class. And I'm going to call this my list with a generic plus t argument because I like containers to be covariant. And uh, this my list has a head of type t and a tail of type my list t. Cool. So this is an abstract class. I'm pretty sure you know what uh, what is going on here. I'm going to define a non-empty list of type plus t, which has some head of type arrow t and a tail, which is of type arrow my list t. And this extends my list t. So right now what I've done is I've created a linked list which has the uh, pointer to the value contained in this node to be called by name and the pointer to the remainder of the list to be an argument still with a call by name. Now I'm going to combine that with a lazy val. So I'm going to write the following. I'm going to say override lazy val head which is h and override lazy val tail is t. So I've implemented both of these methods. I've overridden the defs with vals, which I'm pretty sure you already know. And uh, whenever I refer to head, I'm actually going to evaluate this by name argument. Now, why is this pattern so powerful? Well, this is powerful because we are using by name arguments, and that means the arguments h and t are not evaluated until used, until referred to. And uh, they are referred to whenever head and tail, the members, need to be evaluated as well. So because the only places where we evaluate the constructor arguments are the initialization of the lazy values, which also trigger on first use, it means that neither the arguments nor the fields here are evaluated on construction. And even better, if the fields are ever used, they're evaluated only once and then reused again. So whoever refers to head evaluates it once and then reuses the same value. This is a pattern that is called call by need, which is when you combine a by value argument with a lazy field, which you can then reuse. This is particularly powerful with infinite collections. And uh, in Scala 2.13 and on, we have the concept of a lazy list, which is implemented with this exact pattern. Now, trick number three is a trick that I like to call hold the door. So this third and most powerful aspect of call by name is that it prevents the computation of the arguments so that the expression can be handled in some other way literally. Let me give some examples. So let me define an attempt, which is of type try of int. I'm pretty sure you're familiar with try. 
try embeds a computation that might fail. And uh, we naturally construct a try with the try constructor, which is the try companion object supply method, and we can pass any expression inside, which uh, should be of type int, but it can probably fail. So I'm going to throw new null pointer exception, for example. Now, if the apply method from the try companion object had taken an argument in the old by value style, then uh, the construction of a try object would have been impossible because this expression would have needed to be evaluated first. And so uh, because we're using call by name, we can actually pass this expression literally and let the tries apply method handle it in some other way, which is, for example, try to evaluate it and then wrap the exception that's being thrown. Now combine that with a uh, very easy curly brace syntax for single argument function and you obtain something that looks very much like something embedded in the language. So you use try which is a custom type and then you use the curly brace syntax to make it seem like part of the language. So in your case, when you want to use the hold the door pattern, you can use a by name single argument function to call that function with the curly brace syntax and you can pass in any expression that you like. Same with futures. If not for call by name, you couldn't pass an expression to be evaluated on another thread. So let me define a future, which is future the type, which I need to import from Skull Concurrent, and the futures apply method also takes a by name argument, which I can then use with a curly brace syntax, and I can pass in a very hard computation for another thread, and I'm going to obviously return 42, and uh, just for my code to compile, I'm going to import the appropriate execution context. So Scala Concurrent Execution Context Implicits, Implicits, damn it, implicits global. So notice how nice the combination of a single argument function with a by name argument looks with the curly brace syntax. It makes it seem like part of the language. Using this pattern properly will lead to clean APIs and clean code in your project. All right, so I hope this was useful. I'm Daniel, and you can find this article at rockthejvm.com forward slash blog in written form, and you can follow me on Twitter and LinkedIn with the links in the description attached to this video. Now, I'm dying for feedback, so please leave yours in the comments, and if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe, because more videos like this will be coming soon. Until next time, thank you for watching.